In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create this nice label here, which is basically our starting point. So we're going to put in the value here and then we give it a color. And we're going to remove the hover effect here, or at least the hover dot. When you hover over these items here, there's no dot effect as well. So let's continue on. And this is the part two of how to create a stock market chart like the coin market cap. We're going to create the label here or the tagging tag that we have here and we're going to remove this hoover effect that I didn't cover yet in the first part if you're new here and you're watching this make sure you watch part one first because this is a continuation of that part so I'm going to scroll down here and let's remove the hoover effect here and I had this already here but apparently it is not the hoover point radius it is the point hoover radius so I'm going to remove that the point and hoover radius save that refresh so now if I hover over the area as you can see here we get no more this large dots all right that's the first one so the next thing what I want to do here is to start adding up the label here so I'm going to scroll down here and within this dotted line we can continue on with the label to do this I'm going to uh, make here a new item and in here we're going to create a new shape and this shape will be what we call a rectangle that should start from the very beginning and then touching this point here. So it's only within this part and never touches within the chart area, just before the chart area. So what I'm going to say here is the following. I'm going to say here, ctx dot begin path to indicate we're going to create a new shape here that is independent of any other shape. And of course, if you have begin path, we also can put a close path in here. The next thing what I want to do now is Start to give it a color. So to give it a proper color, I'm going to use here CTX dot fill style. And here we can probably use the same fill style as the upper one here. And this is a stroke style, but now fill style is referred to the background color. So we have this one here. Once we have this, what I need as well is having the rectangle shape. So I'm going to say CTX dot rec. Or sorry, not rec, but fill rectangle. And this is a command that basically says I want a rectangle that is filled up with the color, whatever we have here assigned. So what I'm going to do now is here start to do something. I'm going to put in here the value. So what we're going to do here is the x value, the y value, which is the starting x and y coordinates. And then we have here the width and the height. So our starting point on the X will be zero because we start here at the very beginning and we want to touch this point here. So I'm going to say zero. The Y will be dependent on whatever we have here. So I'm going to copy this here. And because we're using this quite often, I realize that maybe we can use a shorthand for this specific variable here. So I'm going to create a constant for this. I'll just say a constant and we say start starting point equals that so that will just shorten our code because I'm using this probably more often that's how you have this one all right so once I have this the Y I'm going to copy this put it in here that will be our starting point and then here the width well let's do here for now I'm going to say here 10 pixels in width 10 pixels in height save refresh all right interesting we get an error here so let's see what's going on here so eta is not Defined, so I probably forgot something. So let's say here 111. Let's go here 111. There we are. Sorry, I have to make sure that this is data. Apparently, by copy pasting, was missing a D. Refresh. There we are. You can see here it starts to match, but not entirely, or at least where it's matching is basically on the line here and then downwards. So, what we need to do later on is we have to push it up, and we're going to work on that. So what we're going to do now is trying to get the width and the height here. Although the height will be, of course, dependent on the text. So we need to put in the text as well. But what we can solve here is the width. Because basically this line here is the left line in the chart area. So what we can say here, this point here, just say left. If I save this, refresh, there we are. All right, so now we have this here. Let's do it like that. Then what we're going to do is now put in here the text. And then after we're going to define the height of it. So I'm going to put in enter, enter, and then what I'm going to say here, I'm going to write the text. So I'm going to say, first of all, ctx.font. So we're going to define a font. So I'm going to say 12 pixels. That's a default font size of uh, chart chairs. And I'm going to say here the 
sans serif as font family, which is a default font family uh, uh, in charges as well. So if we know this is 12, this height here should definitely be higher than that. 12 is then some power we can do here 15 or maybe 20. So I'm going to put in 20 here. If I save that, refresh, there we are. And later on, we can just fine tune that one more. So the next thing what I want to do here is the following. I want to say here the color. In this case, ctx dot fill style because I want to change the color of the font. And as the fill style as well, so it's the full color of the entire font. And we're going to make this white. Next, what we're going to do here is we're going to say here the text that we're going to write. So we say ctx dot fill text. And what we're going to grab here is first of all the text that we want. Then we're going to get here the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So this is very important. So let's start to put in here a certain value. What we can do here, just for the sake of it, I'm going to put in here 0. So we start at 0. I'm going to say here for the y value. The y value will be, of course, this here, or basically the starting point. Convert it here. Put that one in there. So if I save this, refresh. There we are, but you will notice there is nothing. And the reason why there is nothing is because the text is above. This is basically the default way. And how can we see that if I'm going to say here the height of this one, I'm going to deduct this with 10 minus 10, refresh, there you are. So now you can see here. So that means that the baseline is at the top here. And what I want to do is put it in the center. So basically this is the baseline. If this would be the baseline, baseline top, meaning above this dotted line. That's basically the baseline here. So what I need to do here is do some additional features. So I'm going to say ctx uh, text baseline. And I'm going to say here, the baseline will be in the middle. So basically, if you're familiar with a uh, cell, a table cell, you have vertical line, and that's basically what we're doing here. Vertical line, uh, middle, top of brown. So there we are. Now we're in the center here. But of course, the text align needs to be in the center as well. Right now it's in the left side. So what I'm going to do here, enter, ctx. We're going to say text align equals center. Save, refresh. All right, interesting. So now we get this, but it pushes at the back. So why is it happening? Because we are here on the zero line. You can see here, it exactly put it, put it in the center because there's two characters here and two characters afterwards so what we need to do now is not the center on the zero line but the center between zero and the left which is basically the left side divided by two then we get here the center so that's what we're going to do here so we're going to say here the zero will be removed we say here left divide by two save refresh there we are so now we have this here and this works but of course what i want to have now is the text itself instead of this remember we have the starting point value here copy that put it in here save refresh there we are so now we have that one here and that looks quite decent to be honest so what we're going to do here and that's the final item is we're going to extend here a little bit of space so what i'm going to do here i'm going to say options i'm going to say layout and then what i'm going to do here padding i'm going to give a padding left so say left equals, let's say, 10 pixels and see how that works. Save, refresh, there we are. And that is basically how we did this. Final item, if you look very carefully here, you might see there is still a tiny red dot here. The reason why this happens is because we have this line thickness. It's so thick, it goes here down. So I'm going to reduce the line thickness to 2 pixels. The default is 3 pixels, so let's solve that one. Uh, we have to go... All the way up, comma, go to your border width, and then this equals two, comma, save, refresh, and now maybe a tiny one, but now it's far more green, so that looks very acceptable. And that's basically what we're going to do, what we did here. Next video, we of course will continue on with some other items of it, that will be very exciting as well.